Out of all the components we choose for our PCs, the keyboard is the most intimate device we use. Sure, some people are okay with the $15 plastic rubber dome keyboard from Amazon, but for a growing number of users, including myself, building and customizing a keyboard exactly the way you want it has become an obsession. This is my current daily driver. This is my glorious JMMK Pro with modified Everglide Aqua King switches, custom stabs, and of course, custom keycaps. I love this board. I love the way it looks, the weight of its fully aluminum case, and the way it feels to type on it. Unfortunately, it's not perfect. And it's causing me some pain and odd numbness in my left hand during long typing in game playing sessions. Obviously, I need to fix this, so I started looking for a more ergonomic alternative. Enter in a new challenge. This is the Keychron Q10 featuring an ergonomic Alice layout. The Q10 is not your run-of-the-mill Keychron keyboard. For starters, this 75% board is fully customizable with QMK and VIA, sports an all-metal CNC machined aluminum body, has a double gasket design, hot swappable sockets, a 1 kHz pulling rate, steel plate switch, and of course, a healthy dose of RGB. The Q10 doesn't play games with internal batteries, Bluetooth radios, or wireless dongles. No, this board is all about solid ergonomic comfort, customization, and direct cabled goodness. First impressions, I love the weight of this board. It is beefy and could double as a home defense weapon in a pinch. The initial hands-on feel of it is just oozing quality. It's flawless in build, no rough edges, imperfections, or uneven gaps where the case comes together. It's really a sight to behold. So let's talk about how this Q10 came to me as a pre-build. My Q10 in stylish carbon black came with Gatoron G Pro Red switches. They're fine linear switches, but uninspired and basic, and we'll change those out in a bit. Regarding the RGB, the Q10 has south-facing elements and are pretty bright. However, the included keycaps, well, all the keycap options for the Q10 actually, don't have shine through legends. Bummer, but it's fine. Speaking of keycaps, all of the keycap options for the Q10 are OSA Profile, Double Shot PBT, which are of good quality with clear legends. The Q10 is also rocking an encoder knob on the left-hand side of the board that is by default volume up and down with push for mute. Of course, since this is a fully QMK programmable board, the knob can do basically anything you want to do if controlling volume isn't your thing. Below the knob is a set of five dedicated programmable macro keys, which again is a really nice feature for people like me who prefer dedicated macro keys over using a built-in function key combo or layer switching to do all of the things. Keychron really does look, at least from the outside, to have done everything right here with this board. They've even fixed one of my biggest gripes about their products, and that's the location of the USB-C connector on the back of the board. Up until this point, Keychron boards have had their USB-C connectors on the left-hand side of the case, which is just the dumbest location for a variety of reasons. Having the connector in the middle means my cable management will always be on point. Okay, let's get to a typing test, give you a chance to hear this board in action. The board sounds fantastic with the Gator on switches, so if linear switches are your thing, you'd probably be happy with this board out of the gate. That being said, however, this is a custom keyboard, and as such, I'm gonna customize it. The caps that come with this board now are fine as is for now, but while I'm a fan of linear switches, I'm not a fan of the Gator on G Pro Red switches, and I feel like doing something different with this board. So at the recommendation of a friend of the channel, I bought some Gazoo Boba U4T tactile switches. Let's get them installed now and do another sound test to see what it sounds like.
They don't sound massively different from each other, but the feeling is just, the feeling's fantastic. The tactile feel of the U4T switches gives this board the bit extra that I was looking for. The typing action on the Q10 feels great. The double gasket design allows the switch plate, switches, and the PCB to float when pressed down. It doesn't make the typing experience soft or mushy, it adds just the right amount of cushioning. For those looking for RGB goodness, you'll be happy with the Q10's brightness and color patterns. Just keep in mind that if you're looking for more than just underlighting, you'll need to change out the included keycaps. By this point, I'm sure you're asking, what does the Q10 cost already? That fully CNC case alone must make this board crazy expensive. And you're kind of right. It's not cheap. The Keychron Q10 fully kitted out as I bought it was shipped to my door for $215. But for that money, you get an incredibly well-built and designed custom keyboard. Keychron also sells a bare bones version of this board without switches and caps for $195 if you've got switches and caps already in mind. So what are my final thoughts? Well, this has been quite an eye-opening experience for me. My expectations of what Keychron is and what they sell was admittedly wrong. The quality and craftsmanship of this board is just top notch. The Alice layout, so far at least, has been easier to adapt to than I would have thought. And using this board, again, so far, has solved the odd numbness and pain in my left hand, which really is the most important part. Would I recommend this board to you? Yeah, yeah, I think I would. I've kind of fallen in love with this board and I think you would too. Now that you've finished this video, check out our playlist of all the other great computer hardware we reviewed in the past.